this morning I've been asked to speak to you on a very thorny topic, work-life balance. But the truth is, I can't do that, because unless you're out of work, your life has no possibility of being balanced. And I can also tell you that being out of work isn't much fun either. <laughs> so let's further complicate the topic by telling you that the fact is that some of the career and job choices that many of you in this room have made will prevent you from ever raising a family or having a pet or going to visit your family and loved ones on special holidays or occasions. Your job just won't allow for it. It's just not possible. You see, the fact is that most of us dedicate about a third of our waking time to work. So right off the bat, your life cannot possibly be balanced. Not if you consider all eight of the key elements that dominate our time and our energy. But what I can talk about is this. How do you start enjoying your life a little more each day by doing the things that really matter to you? How do you do that? Because ultimately, what life balance comes down to is this simple question. How do you really give your life meaning and purpose? How do you spend time doing the things that you have a passion for, that you love to do, that excite you? Because ultimately, that's where the balance is going to come in your life. So let's take a quick look at the eight key elements that make up the journey of life assessment because as you'll see on the screen up here, these are the eight elements that dominate your time and your energy. Or as somebody once said to me, they suck the life out of you. I want to keep it positive. So let's go through all eight and I'm going to give you just a thumbnail sketch on each one so that you can better understand how they play into your life and life balance. I like to start with the first one here, which is environment. Now, what environment is all about, it's those factors that basically you were born into or that you live with day in and day out. But for your first 16 or 18 years, you didn't have any say in your environment. For example, your parents, your siblings, your relatives, your race, your religion, where you went to school, certainly elementary school, and even the friends that you befriended. All of these things were sort of placed in front of you or handed to you, for better or for worse. So if you came from a toxic environment where perhaps it was a punitive upbringing or it was harsh, now we're all at an age where we can change our environment. We don't have to be captive to a toxic, negative environment anymore. Secondly, are your careers. I talked a little bit a moment ago about the hardship of some careers that we have chosen, but the fact of the matter is the best career choice for you are the ones that utilize your gifts and talents. So my question to you is this. What do you have a passion for? What do you love to do? Because what you love to do, you'll excel at. And that leads us to the third element up here on the chart, and that's money. One of the things that I've learned is that successful people who really excel using their gifts and talents make lots of money. You do not have to be brilliant to make money, but you really have to do what you love. And you have to do it with people you love. And that's the fourth element, relationships. So two thoughts on relationships. First, do you have a positive, loving relationship with yourself? And secondly, who do you surround yourself with? Who are the five most influential people in your life? Are they positive influence? Or do they suck the energy out of your day and your emotions? You want to be in relationships with people that build you up, not break you down. 
And that's probably a good segue into the next element, the fifth element, which is romance. Now, romance, I think, has more to do than just sex and love. It certainly has a lot more elements. Romance is about your state of happiness. Do you love yourself, first and foremost? Because if you don't love yourself, you aren't going to be capable of giving forth much love to anybody else. So you have to feel good about you and love yourself. And then secondly, who balances you? Who brings out the best of your talents and gifts in life? Who's a great partner that not only will help you romantically, but will also help you emotionally and spiritually? And I think that really gets to the heart of romance and how you can have a successful relationship. Now, the sixth element is fun and recreation. You know, the wonderful expression, all work makes Jack a dull boy. You have to have some fun and recreation in your life. And I'm talking about things that are more than just going to a movie or going out to dinner or drinking a glass of wine on Friday night. Now, I'm not suggesting you have to go over here to the Coronado Bay Bridge and bungee cord <laughs> off it in order to have a more fulfilling existence. But fun and recreation is about doing the things that are going to take you away from the workplace and re-energize you. And that's what fun and recreation is all about. The seventh element is wellness. You know if you're physically well. You know if you're not. And if you're not, you have got to get well because there's no way that you can enjoy life to its fullest if you're ailing physically, emotionally, mentally, and even spiritually. So wellness is paramount to enjoying a full, balanced life. And ultimately, the eighth element is spirituality or your legacy. You see, I don't know about you, but when I'm dead and gone, I hope they have something more profound to etch on my tombstone than Tom made budget. <laughs> what are they going to say about you? I hope what they'll say is that you were an inspirational person. Inspirational. That you inspired people to give their best. That you were fun to be with. That you created a lasting legacy because not only who you are, but what you contributed and gave back. So what I've tried to give you is a quick snapshot of those things that steal our time and zap our energy and throw our life out of balance. Now here's something else to consider. I think it's okay to be off balance from time to time. Because, frankly, that's how we grow. That's how we change. That's how we transform from who we are to what we desire to be. And I also want to remind you that it isn't necessarily the major successes in life that we need to be concerned about. Ironically, I think it may in fact be the small things that we celebrate day in and day out, like spending time with our children, vacationing, going to places that we've always dreamed about going, doing the things that celebrate the gift of life and make us feel worthwhile and so special. To me, that's what really creates balance in our life and helps us regain control of our life.